Yo, 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 this is Mr. O. Yo, 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 this is Mr. O, and today we're going to learn about product to sum or vice versa. There, this is a, uh, another part of the uh, identities that we have to learn here in Trig. Uh, let's go ahead now. So for uh, you make sure that you're familiarize yourself with the formula. Okay, if they are listed here in the board. Uh, <clears throat> this is the uh, formula for uh, product to sum, the one on the left. And this one here on the right side is my sum to product. Okay. So why is it product sum? Because here, you, when you're multiplying them, is the value. It's a, uh, it's like a two terms that you can add. That's why it's sum. And on the other side here, you're adding them or basically subtracting. The answer is something that you will multiply. Okay. So the A and the B represent an angle there. Okay. Uh, so again, make sure you have a copy of this identities. So let's apply this one here. In the first one here, rewrite each expression as a sum and, or difference. So here I have sine 3x times cosine 2x. <clears throat> and again, uh, the assumption is that you are familiar with the formula. So I'm going to write here sine a times cosine b. a and b represent an angle is equal to half of the uh, quantity sine a plus b uh, plus sine a minus b. On this case here, the value of a is 3x and the value of b is 2x. <clears throat> so I'm going to have 1 half sine 3x plus 2x plus sine 3x minus 2x. We know that uh, 3x plus 2x is sine 5x. And I will distribute the 1 half already for each term. Plus 1 half of sine x. And there you go. That's the correct answer there. Okay. Let's do this one here. Negative 14 cosine alpha times cosine 5 alpha, okay? So in this case here, I'm going to use <clears throat> the formula cosine A cosine B is equal to half of cosine A minus B plus cosine A plus B. <clears throat> and I will state that a there is the alpha and b there is the five alpha remember there's a coefficient of negative 14 there so i'm gonna have negative 14 here and then we still have the one half bracket there cosine a minus b here is alpha minus five alpha close that <clears throat> no you don't have to close it my bad cosine of alpha plus 5 alpha. And we can simplify it by adding or uh, subtracting alpha by negative 5 alpha, which will become, uh, there will be a, a 1 half year, and this is cosine negative 4 alpha plus cosine <clears throat> 6 alpha. We can also multiply negative 14 by half already. You don't have to distribute it to the uh, right now. So I can negative 14 times half is negative 7. And then negative 7 will be distributed to all of them. It will be negative 7 cosine of negative 4 alpha minus 7 cosine of 6 alpha. There's a property in our identities, even in odd, that a cosine, <clears throat> cosine negative 4 theta or alpha is going to be a positive. Hold on. <clears throat> I want to make sure it's right. <clears throat> cosine of negative u 
is just cosine u. So this will become, okay, a th uh, one of the identities that we have learned is cosine of negative u is equal to cosine of u. So in other words, this could be written as negative 7 cosine of 4 alpha minus 7 cosine 6 alpha, okay? All right, and there you go. That's our answer for that, okay? <clears throat> now let's try to find the exact value of each expression using the product to sum identities. So I have here cosine 185 times sine 135, and let's say that's my A and this is my B. The formula to use here is <clears throat> cosine A sine of B is equal to half of sine A plus B minus sine of A minus B. <clears throat> As we know that A and B are 195 and 135, so this will be half of sine 195 plus 135 minus sine of 195 minus 135. And <clears throat> 195 plus 135 is 330. <clears throat> I will distribute the one half to them. And this will be sine 195 plus 135 is 60. We know that <clears throat> sine 330 in our unit circle is going to be negative 1 half minus 1 half and sine 60 in our unit circle is going to be square root of 3 over 2. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm right. <clears throat> and simplify it, negative one-fourth minus square of three over four, or we can simplify it and put them in a single fraction, negative one minus square of three all over four. And that's the answer. <clears throat> Next, if we have negative eight, cosine pi over four, cosine pi over 12. Uh, so we have negative eight as a coefficient outside, so we'll just take care of that one later on. One half of cosine uh, <clears throat> pi over four minus pi over twelve plus cosine of pi over four plus pi over twelve. Uh, we know that. <clears throat> Negative 8 times 1 half is good to have a negative 4 outside there. So the problem now is how do we do with pi over 4 and pi over 12? So on the side, pi over 4 minus pi over 12, our goal is to combine them by making the denominator the same. So multiply by 3, by 3 here. That will give you 3 pi over 4, uh, 3 pi over 12, I mean, minus pi over 12, which basically is 2 pi over 12 or pi over 6. So this item here is pi over 6, so I'm going to write here cosine pi over 6. <clears throat> and here, I'm going to do the same thing, but this time it's going to be adding. So if it's adding, I'm going to multiply by 3 here, 3, so it's going to, it should have been the same thing, 3 pi over 12 plus pi over 12. So this will be 4 pi over 12, which is saving as pi over 3. So the answer here in this part is cosine Pi over 3. <clears throat> Which we all know that cosine pi over 6 is going to be what? How much that one? Uh, squared of 3 over 2. And um, you will, don't forget to distribute the negative 4 here, okay? So this would be negative 4, uh, pi over 3 is going to be 1 half. So if you multiply that one, this is cancel out. This will be 2 over 1. So this will be negative 2 square of 3. Cancel this out here. This will be now negative 2, right? Do that one. And that's the answer, I believe. <clears throat>